Hi, everyone. Welcome to Every Day, your daily source for virtual reality content. I am D, and normally I would be putting on my Oculus Rift development kit and playing some kind of demo, some kind of game, just to show you what it's capable of and the many exciting things that are out there to play. But today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, today's a very exciting day in the news because Oculus VR has just released a new prototype, and they are showing it at CES, the International Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. And its code name is Crystal Cove. And what Crystal Cove does is it adds a lot of exciting new features to the Oculus Rift that I think are going to make it way more compelling as a consumer product. Now, just to give you an outline of these features, you may have already noticed, looking at it, that it's covered in weird-looking little dots. And what those are, are therefore an optical motion capture system. These are infrared LEDs. So what they do is um, they're kind of like the, um, the LED inside your remote control. Each of them emits infrared light, which is captured by a special infrared camera that can see that kind of light. And what they get out of this is that as you wear the headset, because they're arranged in a particular pattern, if you move the headset to the left or to the right, they will be able to tell exactly where you are moving the headset in space. So if it's over here, they'll know it's over here. If it's over here, they'll know it's over here. And it doesn't matter what the angle is because they still know the pattern and they can tell where it's, where it's supposed to be. So you can imagine like all the game opportunities you can do with this. You can you can be wearing the Rift and you can like be ride, driving a car, you lean out the car window and you like feel the wind on your face. Okay, maybe there won't be wind, but like you can like look back behind you or in front of you. You can imagine um, like if you have a table in front of you like you do in um, Blocked In. Uh, you can imagine leaning down and looking closer at that table and the things on it. And people are so tempted to do this right now and blocked in. But what they discover is when they do it, um, they the table actually like retreats and gets farther away, and you can't get your face closer to it. It's impossible. Um, other things you can do with it if you're playing like a first-person shooter, you can like lean around a corner, see if someone's waiting for you. Um, if you're uh, I mentioned in my ocean rift, it'd be nice to like lean down and look at those plants down on the ground, those little shrubs. Um, and you can also just kind of push yourself up and like look over uh, short walls and things like that, other kinds of obstacles of that nature. So I think positional tracking is a really exciting feature that offers a lot of potential. And it's also, um, it's just helpful with um, nausea because if you're moving in a certain way and the world doesn't respond in the right way, that adds to the problem of simulation sickness. And um, I definitely think it will be a big help for that. So this technology is the same technology used by uh, movie producers. They'll, for example, if you have Gollum in Lord of the Rings, he'll, they'll have his actor uh, put little LEDs all over his body on straps and just kind of glued to his face or whatever and then they'll have him go through the same motions they want the character to go through. And then they'll record exactly how, where and how he's moving all of his body, and they'll use that same information to animate the digital character. And um, it's a very precise, very fast system, very reliable, and so I think it would be a good choice for them to go forward with, but they haven't said for sure that this is what they're going to use for the consumer version. Now, I mean, there are some obvious disadvantages to it, like if you turn 180 degrees around, it can't see any of the LEDs anymore, and what are you going to do about that? Um, you can't get outside the range of the camera, or uh, it won't work anymore. Um, and some people have suggested that it might be being used in combination with accelerometers. So in other words, if the rift is moving, it can sense that it's moving based on the acceleration that it senses, just like if someone move, pushes you, you can sense that. Um, but um, the problem with trying to measure your current position by using acceleration, so if you remember your, your physics, ex position is just the integral of the integral of acceleration. So you can figure out your position by integrating acceleration, but the problem is that any very small errors in that acceleration, which you will inevitably have with any sensor, will quickly accumulate into increasingly large errors in the position. 
So over very short periods of time, that works very well. Over longer periods of time, you get a huge amount of drift and the position information is totally wrong. So it's possible that they're using accelerometers to figure out the position information from frame to frame very quickly and then using the camera just once or twice a second even to um, basically to correct for that drift and update the current position based on the actual position in space. The other big change that they've made to Crystal Cove that's really exciting is they've changed the display. So first of all, it's suspected to be a higher resolution display. It definitely has much less of a screen door effect than the development kit. But even more exciting than the higher resolution is the fact that they have essentially solved the motion blur problem. So I've mentioned this a few times before. If I wear the Rift and say I'm looking at a sign or, or, or say I'm in Minecraft and I'm looking up at the stars and I move my head around, when I move my head, I will see those stars start to form blurred lines based on which way I'm moving my head. And if I move my head in a circle, they'll make little circles. And it's, it's kind of like taking a long exposure with a camera. And the reason for this has to do with how the human, um, how the human eyes work combined with the low refresh rate of the screen inside the Rift. So I'll explain this with some animations. So first, suppose you're looking at a normal monitor in real life, and there's a dot in the middle of that monitor, a red dot. And you're looking straight at it, and then as you're looking at it, you turn your head to the right while continuing to look at that dot. As you turn your head to the right, you don't even notice it, but your eyes reflexively turn to the left at the same time. That's referred to as the vestibulo-ocular reflex, and it's extremely precise at tracking objects as you move your head and ensuring that they continue to project onto the same spot on your retina. The result of that is you don't perceive any motion of the object across your retina, and it remains in focus and sharp. Now say you were wearing a head mount display and in the virtual world there was a monitor exactly the same size and distance from you as your actual real monitor and there was a dot, a red dot in the middle of it just like the one in your real monitor we mentioned a minute ago. Now if you want to turn your head to the right and continue to observe that dot projecting onto the same point on your retina and being just as sharp and in focus as it would be in real life then the red rays that show where it crosses the head-mounted display screen, those represent the pixels on the display. They have to shift to the left in real time. And they have to update at the same rate that your eyes are updating their rotation as you turn your head, which is on the order of a thousand hertz, far, far above any refresh rate of any monitor that exists today. So what does it look like when you're using a real monitor that has a more typical refresh rate on the order of 60 hertz. Well, this is what it might look like if you slowed it down by many, many times. As you can see, each time the screen gets a new image, the screen updates the location of the two red pixels on the head mount display the screen. Between updates, the as you continue to turn your head and your eyes continue to rotate, the image starts to move across your retina because your eyes are still rotating, but the image on the screen is not changing. And the result is that you perceive the pixel to be moving, uh, the pixel on the virtual monitor to be moving to the right and then returning when you get the new image to its correct position and then moving to the right again. And it does that over and over and it does it so quickly that all you perceive is a blurred horizontal line. So how does Crystal Cove fix this? The answer, in short, is that on the Crystal Cove prototype, the screen is black most of the time. The only time when the screen displays an image is when it has just received an image and that image is in exactly the right place and your head and eyes are in exactly the right place, that, that that image will project it onto the correct place on your retina. It displays each image for less than a millisecond and then it goes black. If you do this quickly enough, your brain will not notice that the screen is black between the display of the brief images. The result is that those flashes go to the right place on your retina over and over and over again, 
And those images all kind of blur together to form a coherent, sharp image of that point. So that's how Crystal Cove essentially solves the motion blur problem. And this is enormous because it means now when you look around inside the rift, you don't see any motion blur. You look up at the stars, you look at a sign of some text on it, you move your head, you move through the world, you don't see motion blur. And that's huge because that gives you the same sense that you get in real life when you're looking at an object and moving your head around. And to get you that closer to the sense that you get in reality is a huge step for head mount displays and for virtual reality. Now, I don't have access to a Crystal Cove prototype myself, but there are a bunch of journalists who have been given access to the demo prototype. And I recommend uh, that you go check out some of their videos. I've linked them in the description and get some of their firsthand impressions and just see the prototype in action because it's really exciting. Thanks everybody for watching and everybody have a great every day.